Welcome to the XY Advisor podcast. To join a global community of financial advisors sharing and learning with one another to drive the positive evolution of financial advice, head to xyadvisor.com. G'day, Clayton here from XY Advisor. Baz from Social Advisor is on today. Thanks so much for coming on. Uh, pleasure, Clayton, mate. It's good to be here. Go back to what year did you have your social advisor in on the Gold Coast? Oh, oh, actually, whether, yeah, yeah, it was the Gold Coast, yeah. Yeah, we actually had it over a couple of years. So you're talking about the Advisor Edge conference that we ran. And the, yeah, the Michael Kitsis was there. Uh, I'm trying to remember which one that was. I think that was actually 2014 or 2015 with Michael Yeah, that's, that sounds about right. Um, and that was the first time, because it wasn't the very first Advisor Edge, but it was the first one that I'd been to. And um, that event... And I was sitting next to Corey Wassell. That event started XY Advisor. So um, I always wanted to tell you that because it was literally sitting in the crowd at your event that this whole thing came about. Awesome. Look, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, 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 pay, I pay attention to human patterns and part of what I was trying to do there was to spark a bit of a renaissance in the advice profession. Um, so I had a sneaking suspicion that, I mean, I'm not going to claim credit for it, but at least some seeds were planted. Um, and, you know, as I was saying to you just before, it's kind of been cool watching XY grow. You know, there was times when I wasn't sure if you guys were heading in the right direction or whatever, but I really <laughs> like the vibe you're, you're pulling together. Um, and that's what I really wanted, you know, wanted to see is advisors supporting each other. And, you know, I've had my stints with supporting FPA and the AFA and, you know, MDR T2, which, which I'm actually probably doing a bit more of at the moment. And look, I'm not going to say anything bad about the, the associations. They've got a role to play, but it's not my, it's not my space. So seeing you guys kind of pick up the ball and roll with it, it's been really cool to see, you know, and that 2013 um, event, which was, you know, it was kind of about social media and then, and, but really just innovating in advice. Um, and I was covering more of the, you know, the digital content side of things in, in, at that time because it was so new and no one really understood it at all. Um, and then, yeah, 2014, I think it was, we had uh, Michael come over. And, you know, he's a, pretty, he's a pretty cool guy. Yeah. And at the time, I remember him saying to me, Baz, I don't think we could have got 300 people in a room <laughs> in the US of advisors to, you know, get together and talk about this kind of stuff. So, mate, well done. Good to see. You. And look, thanks for the thanks for the kudos. It's, no, uh, it's nice it, to hear. I always wanted to let you know that because um, it, it X Y sort of started as a as a blog, and no one cared. No one was reading it. Uh, it was really bad as well. I think if you go onto the Wayback Machine, there's like a couple of articles that survived no, the test of I, time. I look. I stalk people. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I watched. You know, watch what you guys were doing. I kind of put a few things here and there to see if, um, you know, you'd buy it or ask, but I, I like that you roll, you rolled with that ball, um, on your own, on your own bat. That was awesome. Yeah. Um, and if I planted the seed, well, mate, that's good. That's, that's what I wanted to do. Awesome. Well, it, 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 because I got out of, I got out of this social advisor and, um, I was sitting there with Corey and I, I said, this whole concept of XY advisor original was, was meant to be me as an advisor talking to potential clients, but that, but no one cared. And um, then as soon as we sort of pivoted from uh, talking to clients to talking to advisors, that's when it really took off. And, and even the first guest was uh the first guest speaker was brad fox and he was on stage speaking at your event and i remember because you'd been talking all about twitter and everything and mate i had no idea i really had no idea what social media was and i'm not gonna lie i had no idea zero idea and then you're talking about twitter so i was like okay i'll jump on twitter and then I tweeted to Brad Fox, hey, man, like speak at the first XY event. And he was like, yeah, call my, um, 
call, call the, uh, the, my office and then, you know, I'm calling up and, and I didn't even like, how do you even say to an office, Hey, I, I'm the Twitter guy, right? Like it's, <laughs> it's so ridiculous. And I was, uh, and the whole story is hilarious, but, um, that, you know, uh, many different people have sort of come through that X, Y team over time, but there's always been that sort of a core four of us. Um, and nowadays, like, I mean, yeah, realistically, we only, we were going to give it up late last year. Um, then an investor came on board, uh, seeded a little bit of capital into the company. Um, and then, so we decided to, rather than let it go to, to turn it into a social media company and we'll see what happens. Right. Like, obviously I've come from not knowing anything about social media, going to your conference, fast forward like six years later. And that here we are like attempting to launch a, uh, a vertical social media or, or a niche social media uh, company. So we'll see how that goes, but um, you know, we're still very embryonic, but I, the, I've always just wanted to sit down and tell you that I was in uh, social advisor and Corey, Corey will uh, attest to this if he's listening. Um, that definitely, definitely did occur. But this is what I wanted to speak to you about today. Cause I've heard, a lot of what you've said about the industry and realistically, and if you go back to like 2013, 14, 15, no one knew anything yeah. about any of this. You came along and you blew everyone's mind and it, and things were like, it, it, it almost looked too big, too quick. Like it, it really, it really blew up. I mean, it just was massive, right? Social, social advisor was everywhere. And then um, at some stage, you've decided that either like consciously or subconsciously and it either was the result of something good or something that wasn't good. And I don't really know, but you went from being like the shooting star to playing in the background. And that was such a, like, it's such a, you're such an interesting character, I think in this, in, in financial advice globally. And you've played such an important role in dragging the industry from its archaic roots into like the modern world. And then, um, was it just too much pressure or like, how did you, because you know, when like you see these, you see these people get like too famous too quickly and it's like, Whoa, you know, like, was that, was that a part of the story? And it's just something I've really wanted to ask. Yeah, no, cool. Good questions. Um, and you know, obviously with my own community and, and my clients, they all kind of understand the story. Um, but it's not something I've really spoken about in a major way. Um, so I'm going to start off and say, look, maybe there's some element of that, but I think, I think there's probably a few deeper, deeper perspectives to that. I think life is a journey of figuring out how to be yourself. Right? And you know, I think the the tough times, if you allow them, are the ones that give you the best lessons. And so part of it is an evolution of myself. You know, I call it fighting, fighting my ego, um, unwinding it. Um, so there's an element of, I guess, really making some major breakthroughs in my own self-awareness. My ego not being the driving force behind my business direction and I have to say, there's a challenging period in there where things just went to shit, part of my French, um, because I had to relearn how to make myself do things. But as far as the social media stuff goes and being the public figure, nah, it's just that I did what I needed to do. You know, I think when people look at me and go, well, why didn't you do that? Well, if that was the, if that was the case, then I never would have sold my financial planning business. You know, if it was just about making dollars and being successful, then, you know, that was a pretty good path to follow. And I'll be honest with you, it would have been a hell of a lot easier. So, um, you know, I had my own advice business for nearly 15 years. Um, and, and for me, like I've, I've talked about why, and I've talked about purpose and I've talked about passion and I'm kind of evolving you know, one step beyond that. And I'm just going to say, I'm, I'm a weirdo and I'm, and I'm obsessive. I'm obsessive about human behavior and I'm obsessive about how advice can make people be more of themselves to make better decisions, to have better lives. You can't, it's, it's very difficult to be objective about your own situation. And that's why everyone needs advice. And, you know, you shot me the 
the Sam Hendo um, interview you did. And um, I said I'd listen to it before today and, and I did. And I thought that was really good. Kudos to Sam. Um, I, sent him a, I sent him a message on Facey and went, mate, I should have checked this out earlier. Um, you know, kudos to you. You know, he went through a pretty, a pretty rough time. And, you know, for me, I'm, I just, I'm obsessed with human patterns. You know, I talk to people nonstop all day. I can't help it. You know, I'll be at the supermarket and someone's telling me their life story and crying. And then they're like, why the hell am I talking to you? It's just who I am. So why, why go from the big brand? Um, you know, sure. We were, you know, we were doing little events and having 300 people turn up and, you know, and I was looking at people like Kerwin Ray, if you, you know, you know him and watching what he was doing and he's scaling up in the digital media space. And, you know, I'm an analytical person. I can see anything that people are doing and figure out how to, how to engineer that. That's part of what I do. And, and it was working. Um, and don't get me wrong. I invested a lot of dollars and, you know, it lost, lost a fair bit of money in the learning process, but I reached a point and said, hang on a second. This Number one, I already figured it out, right? So for me, my job's to be at the next thing. So the social media and the digital presence, in order to get you guys to find a voice and to start thinking just because that's the way it's been done isn't the way it has to be done. Once you'd started the ball on that, I needed to be working on the next thing. So there was that. And I've quietly been building a whole lot of stuff. Um, And so it was a combination of I didn't need to feel the ego reward um, and that was a lesser thing and also just that I'd moved on. So once you guys started to pick up the ball and run with it, hey, I've done my part. So my wife calls me a bulldozer, right? So, or, you know, the point of the snow plow, if you like. So, you know, if someone else wants to come along the road and drive on it afterwards, that's freaking awesome. But I've got to move stuff out of the way. So for me, that's part of the journey. So I was going big, you know, we had big events, we had membership programs and, and part of it was just me learning, figuring out, testing everything. But then it was also me learning that, you know, you know what I really am? I'm an advisor, all right? I talk to people, I see where they're in their own way. I help them look at themselves objectively. I help them find answers and then they get what they want. They get what they really want. And the more I let go of my ego, the better I am at that. And so that's what I'm doing. And, you know, I built, I've done things like build an algorithm, which if you take an advisor through it, it will accurately predict their referability rate. So I've worked out mathematically all of what makes um, referrals work. And interestingly enough, it's, uh, most of it's counter to what the prevailing wisdom is. So asking for referrals is an example. You know, <laughs> if you say, hey, what's all the consultants say about how to get more referrals? Well, you've got to ask for them. Look, it does have a small impact, but the only reason it works is to balance out the relationship equation. So when you ask someone for help, because ultimately if you're an advisor, then the value equation is always tilted in your client's favor. It's always tilted in their favor. You are changing their life far more than they're changing yours. Oh yeah. Right. Including with the benefit of the relationship, including with the financial reward that you're into that way. So whenever you have a relationship imbalance with someone, you create subconscious inconsistencies. And so just asking your client for help and doing that every year and asking them to do something for you without you feeling like you're guilty or you have to give them something back or whatever, first, that helps you actually understand your value as a human. But secondly, it balances out the relationship equation. Now, I worked out all of the different components of that how? Well, because I'm obsessive. <laughs> Why? Well, because I'm obsessive. Uh, look, that's the core of it. And sure, I can say, you know, what do I want to do with that? Well, I want to help advisors be better at what they're doing. And, but if I'm also being honest about that, it's definitely that. 
but it's also that I want to be better at it. So uh, I'm going to obsessively do it. So the good thing about going big and having, you know, a big community and membership and all these events and lots of clients and, you know, people that were coming in and we were building up as coaches and stuff like that. The good thing about that was, was it allowed me to iterate and scale my research. So if I look at it that way, I was just doing lots and lots of paid research. And where I'm at at this point is just going really deep with people to see how much change can be affected, not on a, I guess, profession basis, because that's what I started doing. Advice needs to move forward with technology and the message they're saying. And so I planned, this might sound creepy, but I'll tell you the truth. So I planned a whole set of contextual messages that I wanted to build into the, the syntax of the profession. And so my what events... Is, what does that mean? Um, it's syntax. It's, it's, it's like ideas, right? So ideas that are easy to stick in the mind. I'm trying to think of a simple way to explain oh, it. Like, Otherwise, a, like, a, like a zeitgeist kind of thing, like a spirit of the profession. Um, yes, I wanted that to happen. But what I'm saying is if you change the story, the story that people talk about, and it comes through words and narrative, right? So if you can introduce different short pieces of context to a a community, then that will change the community's behavior. And it's the same when you're working with a client individually, if you can get them to reframe their context or accept different perspectives and to see how they're in their own way, then you're going to have massive change with that person. So for me, it was advice isn't moving forward. That's frustrating to me. So I want to push that forward. And that was the, you know, go big, et cetera. At the moment, you know, I'm kind of enjoying not having the spotlight. I'll admit that. Um, But I'm also just planning what's next. There's no point me coming out and talking about social media stuff when you guys are kind of picking up the ball. So I've got other things and I'm working on that and I'm going deep in figuring them out. So hopefully that answers your question. I know it was a... No, 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 no. It's really good, man. Um, So there's actually two things there because here's something that I saw of you and it was a long time ago but it was before you were called the social advisor and you were on TV somewhere and, and, and you were co- like your point was actually we're not just the social advisor. That's, that's only a small thing of what we do, but then obviously like the success of that kind of ran away. So you were just like, okay, cool. I'm going to go, I'm going to get head into this social media piece. But it looked like, when I watched that TV interview, I guess it would have been from maybe like a 2012 or something like that. It seemed like it was before you were known as the social advisor. Yeah. 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 And I always, I always thought that was really interesting that you, you, your original plan was to do, I guess something, but then this little piece of what it was that you were trying to achieve took off and, and it, and it really did take off and it almost seems ridiculous considering everyone's life is now social media, right? Like it's just, it's, it's just everywhere. It's about everything, but literally in 2014, it wasn't real. Like, even though it's only six years ago, the, the, to see how everything's just blown up in that space is almost, it's almost, it's almost hard to fathom. And so I wanted to ask you because I'm not sure if many people have seen that video or if even if you remember doing it, but is there, is there a sense now that with social media being so, I guess, a part of everyone's life um, and you were there, I, I guess, to handhold that transition, are you now looking at the stuff that you were talking about in 2012 uh, before you ever went deep into social media? So let me just see if I got the question right. Are you asking if I'm going back to the stuff I was looking at before? Yeah. Yeah. No, I think, I think if I'm just being like honest about it and I couldn't tell you this at the time, you know, you got to, as you know, this, the famous Steve jobs commencement speak, you connect the patterns going backwards. 
And if you do that enough, then you get good at connecting the patterns every day. And I try to do that for myself as well as for others. So I sold my business um, and there was a catalyst, you know, for that. Nothing, you know, nothing particular. I had a, it was when after post GFC and I'd borrowed money for a couple of books and the bank was um, called in my loan. They used me as a test case. Um, and at the time they told me it was because they found a technical breach in a loan covenant. This isn't a story I've, you know, it's one of those things I said to you, I haven't shared, I've got no secrets. Yeah. You know, I wore that pretty hard to begin with until I realized that they actually picked me because we were a good case. Um, and CBA pulled out of cash flow lending entirely. Um, anyway, so I had a whole lot, I had a whole lot of options lined up to, you know, refinance or take an investor. And I was the sole owner in a reasonable size firm at that time. Um, but it's what I needed. It was the catalyst to go, dude, you've finished what you were supposed to do. I'd taken my journey of learning and I can look back and say it now, my journey of learning to be the ultimate advisor which is really someone that's just helping other really be the best version of themselves. And I'd finished, I'd finished it. And so, you know, I came out of that business. It was you know, very successful and I'd spent a fair bit of money on building platforms. And, you know, these days, you know, what you've done with XY, it, it was, there was no information around about it and it cost money to try and figure it out. And, you know, I kind of fell into, to, this is what I'm going to do. So what I actually did was I built content around how to build the ultimate advice firm and the social media bit caught on because no one really had how to do it. And few still do, but it's, it's got its own momentum up now. So I decided to focus on that first, primarily because I wanted to learn everything there was to consume out of that. And so if I say that to you, really now if I'm, I can see the pattern in myself, I'm obsessive about the next thing. Not the next thing for other people. That just happened to be a good time coincidence. But obsessive about going deeper on the next journey for myself to being a better advisor. And ultimately, I think in life, the synchronicity has to be there. You have to be delivering to others the thing that you most seek for yourself. And that's one of the things I've observed through more than 45,000 client meetings now. You have to be delivering to others what you're seeking for yourself. And if you can understand how to draw that pattern out for someone, you can completely change their life. So that's really the bit that I'm doing now is helping advisors become something much more. I only, I, we, so the business as it stands at the moment, we have kind of, we've got some material, you know, I've got offers to license my algorithms in the States and all kinds of stuff. And yeah, sure, it'll make lots of dollars and it's interesting, but it just doesn't fit with my obsession. So, so I haven't actively pursued it yeah. probably. Um, We've got corporate stuff that we do because I like testing out change management at a larger scale, but that's a little challenging because I don't like bureaucracy and, and inability to adapt, but I want to figure out how to do it within a resistant system. And that was part of why I helped shift the profession of advice, the tipping point, how to trigger a change in a resistant system. Well, why? Because that's just at a macro scale what you're doing individually for a client. And, you know, there's really interesting research about this. You know, everything, everything's kind of a fractal of itself, especially when you're talking about human ecosystem. So, you know, when you understand the pattern, you can understand how the pieces fit together. You know, I was telling my clients at the start of January that they wouldn't be able to buy toilet paper for a while and they thought I was nuts. You know, the, the riots in Minnesota, that was easy to predict. You know, all of this stuff is a human pattern, but not if you look at it, you know, at an individual scale. So yeah, there's, there's, there's my bigger answer. I finished doing that. And so it was kind of not enough to satisfy me. So I've moved on to doing other things, but I have to say as a personal aside, 
it's more reward. I'm a relationship person, right? I say to my clients, if we're not going to love each other, then let's not do it. And I say it right up front. I, you know, have a whole thing that I go through. Um, I know what I, I know what I do. I know my stuff, right? I can help you. Here's where you're at. Here's where you want to be. Here's how I can help you get there. But if you want that, then here's some things that we've got to get right. And that's what I teach other advisors to do as well. I think, and this is universal, right? It's kind of an indoctrination. So if we talk about that syntax before, here's one of the things that I try to change. So it's hard to get clients. You need to make money. By and large, advice businesses haven't run on margins that I believe are appropriate and certainly not appropriate for the value potential they have to create for their clients. But they're operating on the basis of they're joining the client's business from a conceptual point of view. So I'll do what I need to do. I'll be subservient to, to you. I've got to win your, you know, I've got to win you over. And honestly, it's the wrong psychology to have. So I say to advisors, you got to figure out who you are. Who do you serve? Why? I mean, in your personal emotional language, what does it mean for you? Figure that out and then say to people up front, this is what I do. This is why I do it. This is what I get out of it personally. And this is what I help my clients do. And that's how it changes their lives. And if you want that, you can have it. But this is the terms. And so a big part of that is a shift in the self-worth of advisors. And, you know, that's the journey we're all on. So I talk about self-awareness. Everything is a separation from self. So it's all about self-acceptance and self-worth. And so if you can help someone to move past the roadblocks that they have, then they do cool things for others. And I've also discovered about myself that as I've gone on my own journey of this, I don't need to be the guy scoring the try. You know, when I first started out as an advisor, you know, back, back in the day, so we're talking 96, 97, uh, with one of the people that's, you know, come into XY that you were talking about before, we started in the same group together. And, um, you know, it was kind of interesting. And it, it was, here's a desk, here's a phone book was an add-on to a brokerage firm and, you know, go and get clients. And it was mostly insurance and, and financial, you know, some financial products, but, you know, mostly just superannuation and that kind of stuff. Finding clients has never been a challenge for me. I'm lucky in that sense. There's been plenty of other things that are a challenge for me, but not that. What are a challenge for you? Uh, my obsessive brain is a challenge, you know, so when it wants to move on and it's not just my brain, I guess it's my purpose behind that as well. I have a purpose. I'm here to, I'm here to do some stuff. And you know, that's a, an expense of business models. Lots of times it's an expense of, you know, relationships where, you know, people are bought on and committed to one thing and, you know, I'm moving past it. Um, not in a bad way, but sure, you know, it's cost me millions and millions of dollars, this obsession. Um, and so I'm not about, you know, it's funny, I got a mentor, Richard Arnold. I don't know if you've come across him, but you should get him on your show. And if you want to, I could probably, could probably hook that up. Please. Um, really, really, really smart and impressive guy. Uh, and he actually spoke at one of the advisor edges. So I could probably get his speech for, for the XY community if you wanted that as well. Great. Really cool. Um, so universally, that was a 2016 advisor edge and 2017. Um, and scariest, scariest but most absorbing was the universal feedback for that. And he's kind of saying to me, well, what do you want this thing to look like? And I couldn't answer that. All I can answer is, what I want to do and that is be a better advisor and help other people to be better advisors. So, so you sort um, of come at, you come at a lot of stuff from a really scientific, I guess like you, you, you want to find, you've got a hypothesis, 
first you create the test and creating a test is really difficult. I think people kind of underestimate the difficulty in creating a test that matches your hypothesis. Yeah. And, and then you're kind of looking at the results and then you're kind of looking at the conclusions and then you're kind of like adding that to your, I guess, a growing list or a litany now at this stage of different experiences. And a lot of this stuff is you solving problems that you see and then taking other people at certain points on that journey with you. So this group of people, so for example, myself, like I, when I came into contact with your stuff, it was really, really helpful, right? So like, and myself and a lot of people sort of grabbed onto that sort of early stage. And then when you kind of moved on to something else and you're looking to test other things and have some other hypothesis and, and get some more conclusions, then you're kind of connecting with other people. I see it kind of interesting, mate. You've got this like journey where, different people are latching onto different parts of your journey as you're kind of going through this ultimately what, and you mentioned this before, you're, you're looking to solve things within yourself um, as you're giving advice. And so it's, it, I mean, that explanation really does explain. So you also said that, I mean, a lot of this stuff costs you millions of dollars, but it, it, I mean, it's also like allowed you to make a bunch of cash as well. And what I find really interesting about the way that you approach this is uh, you've got kind of like life experiments that you want to uh, achieve and, and explore because you're interested in it. And then you're kind of going along and bringing like a business model along with you to sort of yeah. fund, fund it. Yeah. It's cool, man. Like I, I'm, yeah. I'm a big fan of it. Um, do you reckon, do you reckon you'll have it? Cause you're still relatively young, right? I mean, you've got a huge career ahead of you. Do you think you get to a point? where you're like, okay, cool. I've explored this. I've explored this. I've explored this. I've now looked back. I can, I can find all the connections. I'm always moving forward. I've now got like a, you ever heard of that concept of the, the theory of everything? Yeah. There's, there's, yeah. So, so you, you kind of like you're working on your own sort of theory of everything on how to be the, the ultimate advisor. Do you reckon, and this is just an idea. Do you think you get to that stage where you're like, actually, like I'm pretty solid in a lot of this. I've made the mistakes and I know what I did wrong previously. I'm going to the U S where the, where the, where the size of the audience is like, you know, 15, 20 times the size of it is here. And you're going to take it to somewhere that you can, I guess, start afresh where all the experiments are done. And now you've got the finished product. Is that, is that on the cards at all? You know, Clayton, that's actually a pretty insightful question. Maybe not for the reason that people are going to think, um, because that's, I mean, yes, have I thought about that? Yeah, definitely. But is it in my nature? Well, let me, let me answer it by connecting some of those patterns going backwards. So, you know, it was a good question. Um, and, and by the way, I want to say this to the audience. I know it's a little bit of a segue. And, you know, my friend Carl Richards and I are very much in alignment with this particular point as well. And that is when you're having a first meeting with a client, you know, everyone's trying to show this value and, and whatever. Um, a big part of it is just you telling them the value. It's your job to say what it is. It's your job to believe it. And that's one of the key things of advisor is to, is to out believe their clients. And that's one thing that I give all of my clients. Here's how you get what you want. And I'm not telling you that this is maybe how you get what you want. This is how you actually do it. And if you do this, this will happen. Do it. Right. So there's the belief part. And the other bit is you have to ask the real value you bring to the table when you're first meeting with a client is getting them to realize things about themselves to make the implicit knowledge about themselves explicit. And you do that by asking really good questions. So I've been watching your journey too, and I watch you evolving your your interviewing skills. And that's a perceptual one because I hadn't thought about it from that angle before. So mate, well done. Kudos to you. Value to you um, as a client today. Thank you, man. So I'm going to say this, you know, I, I, for a while there, after I'd sold my business and I was figuring out what to do, I, I was playing a, an online uh, game, right? So I was figuring was it out what Warcraft. Well. No, no, it wasn't. It was a strategy one. So it was, it was kind of like medieval spreadsheets. Oh, awesome. All right. So because I'm pretty analytical and, you know, you had castles and supply lines and 
alliances and the politics was just insane because you could only survive, you know, in, in a lot and alliances and battles, you know, it was, it was cool. And it was a microcosm of the things that obsess, you know, I obsess about human behavior and how people interact. And so I played this game and, you know, for the first four months, um, you know, I was just a, just a nobody. Um, and then I'd figured out all of the pieces of the puzzle. Uh, and then at this one point, once I'd kind of, so I got good at one thing I got good at another thing. I got good at another, and then I could see the pieces fit together. And then I worked on the people and the alliances and saw how that worked. And then within a period of about a month, which is a short period of time for this game, you know, I became number one in the world. Whoa. And you know, there was six and a half million people playing on that server um, at the time. And there was a very high uh, engagement rate. And so maybe, maybe that's what I'm doing. Maybe it's I'm going to figure out the pieces and then go, boom, here it is. And maybe that's what I did with the social media. Yeah. Right. But it was that one piece. I had that sussed. So here it is. Let's see how it interacts with everyone else. I don't know. But what I also know is I get the most human reward from closer interactions. So I can't stop being an advisor and I don't want to be. And the thing that happened was I became, you know, we had other coaches we had group stuff we have online programs and then i was becoming more removed from the advice conversation and i started losing the well am i evolving as an advisor and am i i like i like the love between an advisor and their clients and the changes that creates so maybe the answer is yes but if so i'm still not going to move past that point all right so it has to be both that's cool so you really you really really like that one-to-one and i think you know you you mentioned the podcasting before this is my substitute because i miss it as well i miss the uh the the advising uh because i i sold my business um maybe like three or four years ago now and uh i've learned i've 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 had the I, the way that I see it is the best front row seat to the the positive evolution of financial advice over the last few years, just by getting to speak to people. And, um, it, it's been awesome. Like, uh, if I don't know if it was just because I was relatively new to the industry. And so I don't have that kind of historical look at it, but from the time that I've joined advice has constantly changed and it's been, and as soon as you, kind of figure it out you realize it can be 10 times better yeah and 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 then at the same time how how do you pursue or what the pursuit of improvement um the struggle is the way that i think of it is you're a circle when you're solid but then when you want to grow you kind of have to cut the the circle and so it's separated, but then it can spiral. So then you can kind of grow. So you grow while it's broken. And then at some point you have to turn that spiral into a circle again. So then it becomes whole, but the, the circle is now larger, but it existed from small circle to larger circle while it was broken. And during that time, while things are broken, things can get in and ruin it. Because you're, even though your goal is to sort of grow, it's almost like a cell. So the, the cell is open and things can break it. And what I always struggled with as an advisor was in my pursuit of improvement, I would go backwards for a while. And that, because you're, you're trialing things, right? And, uh, and so I guess the goal is, especially when you've got an advice company, uh, is to grow, but at the same time, figure out a way that everything else behind you is solid enough to pick up the slack for you if and when you get things wrong during that growth period. And I've spoken to some amazing advisors, advisors that, prob- that I know that other advisors look up to and uh, have, have spoken to them behind the scenes and they 
they all, you know, they, they all suffer that same problem and that what's going wrong, you know, how, why do you think this is an issue? And, and it's only over time that they, uh, that they become a, a full again, like a full solid circle that they're actually able to start getting the benefits after they've done the, the stage of growing. It's when I hear you talk, I, I, I constantly hear the way that I just visualize things that you're constantly that broken circle growing and, yes. and, uh, and, and, and as that's happening, things go wrong. And it's so, it's so interesting to hear you articulate this so well. And it, ex- it, 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 may, it just explains such in, in such a, I think a, a solid way, or at least a clear way to my mind where we saw like all of Australia, let alone the world, but all of Australia just knew who Baz was, saw what you were doing. And then at some point you've decided to pivot and go, actually, now I want to go deeper into these one-on-ones. And I'm, I mean, I'm super interested to, to see where that, where the piece you're on at the moment ends up and then how you're going to put those two pieces together. And then, who knows? I, I just got a feeling you're going to uh, take it around the world if and when you choose to do that, because obviously growth is really emotionally difficult as well. Yeah, look, I think, I think you've, you've made some really good points there, um, Clayton, and some really philosophical ones. And I find the, you know, the, the older I get, the more philosophical I sound, but I come, I come from it from an analysis background. So the, the more I analyze and analyze things, the more philosophical I get, which is kind of interesting. Um, I think what, if I can kind of reframe what you're saying um, a little bit, just so I can see if we can explore it a little bit, the idea of the circle and then the broken circle, what you're really talking about is, you know, the, the, I think the journey of, as I said, being a human and learning and being more of yourself growing. And so, you know, whenever I talk to business people, I've been advising business people in my life, even, even as a financial advisor, a lot of our clients, certainly the ones that I had an interest in were business people and I was helping them with what, like the portfolio stuff and whatever. I kind of mastered that in the first four or five years and the tax strategies and what, whatever, that's fine. But it was more about the human elements. And that's where I want to push advisors to now is, you, you guys in the perfect position, right, to do so much more for your clients than you're actually doing, but you got this limiting box of this is what I do, I'm a financial advisor. No, you're not a financial advisor. You are an advisor. An advisor helps someone be objective about their own situation, find their own answers. If you give them your answers, you're wasting your time you got to figure out how to give them their answers and then help them to be more of themselves and have a better life. You just happen to do that with a denomination on the side, right? So whether you're an accountant or financial advisor or consultant or coach or whatever, and I work with all of those people, um, financial advisors are obviously a little bit closer to home because that's where I come from, but accountants have exactly the same, you know, the same story. And that's, I mean, the thing about it is, right, when you get to it, the businesses that go through this change, the revenue model's completely different, right? One of the biggest problems I had with the social media is that people couldn't implement it, right? So this is adding to what we talked about before. And I'll circle back around to your your circles and broken circles, so bear with me. You know, I, I, I remember the first advisor edge, right? Um, so you were at the next one. The first advisor edge was three days of me going, all right, you want to build, you want to set up your emails, do it like this, do it like this. Uh, you need to tell your story, interview a client like this, do it like that, do a Y video, like short form limbic, long form limbic, you know, even talking about Sam and telling, you know, telling your stories. Well, yeah, you've got to get the emotional content. And I just laid it all out and people went nuts. Yeah. Right? You know, I've got video clips of people doing backflips and, <laughs> you know, whatever. It was, they were just blown away. But then the next year, you know, people came along, some of the same people. And a lot of the people who said it was the best thing they'd ever done, ever been to, didn't come back. And so that was a challenge for me. And I'm trying to figure out why. 
And part of the problem is, as you would know in any business, is implementation. So what's the lever? What's the, what's the starting point? And I'm going to say this to your audience. Almost every single advice business I've ever looked in, and by the way, that's a lot, and I'm actually going to change that and say every single business, has got major holes in their value translation. Mm. Okay. Major holes in their value proposition, in their pricing. You know, uh, I'll give you an example. So in that algorithm I talked about, and if you ever want to dig deeper into that, I'm happy to do some content and whatever you want. I mean, um, so just hit me up. But one of the things in there is I call it price tension, right? So every single advisor I've ever spoken to is um, consciously avoiding price tension with a client. Yes. You know, you put a fee in front of them, but you're justifying it with, well, we saved you more than that or, you know, but your returns more than that or, you know, whatever. Um, and accountants are, you know, doing, doing the same thing. And the interesting thing is that your clients don't value your relationship. They don't take it as serious. And I can tell you for 100% certain that they don't refer you anywhere near as much if they don't have price tension. There has to be some pain in the payment of their fees. Mm. And if you don't get them to experience it, then you're ripping them off. And I know that sounds counterintuitive, but it's absolutely true. You know, when clients engage me, they pay me, right? And I'll tell you now, the clients that I work with, they get returns in the tens of thousands of percent, but they're going to pay me. And I think this is really an important concept for advisors. So if I circle back around to the circle concept, we're all in this boat of evolving ourselves and understanding how to move forward. And an advisor's role is really in the language that you are using to help a client with a broken circle, or I call it a loose orbit, right? Someone that just, they're so close and you just to be there and give them the right nudge and to send them on the next spiral out. Now, for most people, it's a, it's a you know, spiral out and then cement. The more I did the spiraling out, the more I went, fuck it, don't worry about the whole circle, just keep spiraling out. And it's hard, right? Of course it's hard. You know, I wouldn't recommend to too many people to relaunch their business and their pricing model and whatever three or four times a year. I wouldn't recommend they do that, you know, every couple of years, but that's what I've done. And the reason is, I guess, because I'm obsessive and I'm like, well, don't worry about the bit in the middle where you get to be whole. It's kind of never really whole. So we'll just move on to the next thing. So hopefully that gives you a bit of a mate. 100%. Um, now, we, we've got to wrap up just due to time, but uh, this has been a really valuable conversation for me simply from the fact that I got to learn a little bit about you, Baz, because you're a character in the industry that I just wanted to understand a little bit more. So, man, thanks so much for coming on, sharing with us some of your, your thoughts because, like you mentioned before, it really reflected what a lot of Carl Richards was saying uh, we did a tour not long ago and he was saying a, a lot of this sort of stuff. So uh, there's a whole movement in this space it, for the advisors out there that want to say, Hey Baz, uh, how do I get in contact? Yeah, what look, that's, that's pretty easy. Um, LinkedIn's probably my number one platform. Um, so when Clayton wanted to hit me up to do this, he just shot me a message on LinkedIn. So, and I've said this at the end of, I don't know, I've done more than 300 speaking engagements for other people now. Um, just shoot me an invite on LinkedIn. Ask me a question. And I do this magical thing where I'll, I'll answer um, <laughs> and help you out. You know, I do hundreds of meetings a year where I mentor people and there's no commercial relationship. Now, that'll be up to me to decide, so I'm not offering that. Yes but you've got to own your self-worth enough to, to reach out and ask. And, you know, if you do, then I'm happy to point you in the right direction. And if you spark my interest, then maybe I'll sit down and have a chat with you. So 
yeah, just LinkedIn, probably the easiest way. Um, and you can always get a hold of me. Mate, look, thanks for everything you've contributed to the advice industry, especially here in Australia. And I'm, I've got a feeling that at some stage, certainly around the world to a greater extent. So, um, yeah, thanks so much for coming. I really appreciate it. Look, my absolute pleasure, Clayton. And look, thank, thanks to you and the XY team as well. Um, you know, I'm really glad to see you guys moving forward. And I'm really enjoying seeing your own journey of figuring out where you fit. Um, and you're definitely an advisor in your DNA, mate. So you can't help <laughs> it. You can't help but do that. <laughs> I think you're right, mate. All right. Thanks a lot. No problems, mate. Take care. Thanks, everyone.